Hey guys, there is a big event going on these days in the chess world. It is the match between Tan Zhang Yi and Lei Tingji um, for a spot in the Women's World Championship match. So they're playing what is called a candidates match. I believe it's going to be six games. It's being played in China. And yesterday was the first game of the match, and I thought that it suited our theme of the initiative really well that I started to bring up in my video on the American Cup. So let's get to it and get into the critical moment um, in their game. Tan was white, and I can say that I don't think this opening has gone particularly well for her. Right now, she is down a pawn. But of course, you know, she's attacking the knight and she has hopes of getting the b4 pawn back. And the question for black is where to go with this knight? Knight b8 or knight a5 are the primary options. There's not really any point in bringing the knight to e7. Doesn't really have any particular advantages over there. It's not doing much. Um, and in the game, black played the move knight b8. We are going to come back to this moment, guys, because in my opinion, it was a turning point in the game, right? And sometimes a decision like that where you want to uh, go with your piece is, uh, is going to be um, something the game uh, turns on. So she went knight b8. Very understandable move. Now, you might want to pause the video and think about what would, you, what would you do as white. This is a really important moment, and give it a little bit of thought. If it's not um, you know, completely obvious to you, it's definitely going to be an instructive moment because white's move here is very critical. So yeah, go ahead, pause the video. Okay, so we're back, right? Um, if white allows black to just play knight a6, um, it's going to be very bad for white. They're not even going to get their pawn back easily, plus black kind of has their eye on this outpost square. So white needs to unsettle the game right now and therefore c5. You can consider that just an only move, right? There's really nothing else white <laughs> wants to do, um, and they've got to break apart the center right now. So I think for an experienced player, this kind of move is actually, it is very easy, right? Like once you understand what your opponent wants and how the game is going to go in a very bad direction for you, you know you got to act quickly to change things up. It doesn't even matter how you evaluate this position if you think it's, you know, worse for you, much worse for you, unclear. Uh, it doesn't matter at all because you just got to play this move. All right, so black takes and white takes the pawn on e5. So we get this very unclear, murky situation where black is up a pawn. Of course, one of their pawns is doubled. Uh, white has the pawns that are supposedly, you know, better, the center pawns. But, um, you know, black's pawns are kind of more advanced. So overall, <laughs> in terms of how to evaluate this position, I would say, you know, when you're playing, it's going to feel difficult. And that's why in this uh, part of the game, you're going to see both sides making some inaccuracies just because it's a very challenging position to play. Black played f6. Okay, that move is not forced. It's possible. The computer actually preferred this move. Just shows you the level of difficulty in the position. I mean, I totally understand why white didn't do it, right? Because you just look at that move and you're like, really? I, you want me to take on double pawns? Like I'm already down a pawn and now you want me to have double pawns. But yes, white does have compensation again with the bishop versus the knight and, you know, d4 ideas, you know, sometimes d6 ideas. And overall, the computer thought this was the best way for white to go. But white played knight c4, very understandable. Knight d7 and knight e3. Yes, knight e3 and bishop g6. And now it was very important for white to play a move like that. Why? Well, you know, as you know, one of my favorite topics that I've already brought up in a few videos is the a topic of stopping the opponent's ideas. And that's what that move is about. It's actually paralyzing the black queen and stopping these ideas that black later used in the game of playing on the A file. And also our queen 
it's quite active on this diagonal, right? Like not only is she attacking the knight, but she can sort of creep in with queen b5. So that was a nice little detail that white can play. And again, you know, the position is just very complicated. White does have compensation though. So instead of that, uh, white played d6, very understandable, trying to open up that square for the pieces, opening the diagonal, and king h7. Yeah, I'm not sure why black didn't just go here right away. She probably should have. I mean, it does lose the b7 pawn after the trade, but black's pawns on the b and c files would be better. So she really could have done that move directly. She didn't have to go king h7. Okay, she's trying to get her king out of checks. And again, guys, second time, time for prophylaxis, but white doesn't do it. White goes knight d5, focusing on her own peace activity, and now black seizes the chance. Well, white doesn't really want to play an endgame, right? Down a pawn. And um, queen b2. Queen b2, yes, of course, you want to keep the game more complicated. Queen a6 and knight f4. And so you're actually losing your pass pawn, but you're drawing the black king out into the middle of the board. And again, the situation remains pretty murky. I believe the computer was liking some ideas um, with what move was it? Trying to remember. There was some kind of a bishop h3, but it was it was before. Maybe it was instead of rook d1, yeah, there were like these bishop h3 moves. But okay, rook d1 was, oh no, not even that. It was like e, e4, that's right. e4 because they can't go f4 because of e5, yeah. So that was an interesting option. But what white was doing, you know, was very natural. And... Uh, we got to this critical moment. I mean, apparently white's best move was, you know, F4. Okay, and th this is not, none of this stuff is obvious, guys. I don't know how much time the players had, but the point is if the knight moves, like for example here, you know, you've got little tactics starting like this, and you're going to win the rook, but don't think that any of that is clear either. I mean, it's like a total, total mess on the board. Um, you know, with something like that. I mean, if you take the rook with your queen, you're going to trade off the queens, and then black has all those pawns on the queen side, and game could go something like that. I mean, who knows what's going on here. So let's go back a little bit. And here we are. White played rook d5. Yes, and this is the basically the final mistake belonged to black in this sharp position. Because black kind of panicked, I guess. They panicked about the threat of f4 and also the fact that their c pawn was hanging. And they made a move which was, um, it was you could call it a blunder. They played queen e6 trying to attack the rook. And, you know, probably hoping for like rook c5, b3, but then queen c5 happened. Suddenly the rook is hanging, the knight is hanging. Rook d6 is hanging. Okay, there's a lot of threats. And um, Rook takes d7, yeah. You know, remove the guard of the Rook and f8. And so white was up a piece and managed to convert. Of course, there's still a little bit of work to do, but she converted quite nicely with this nice move e3 and basically threatening queen d3 to trade the queens and stop the b-pawn with the bishop. And that's how the game ended. Now let's go back a couple of moves to the key point, how black should have played. Well, actually, black could have fought for the initiative with this move. Okay, actually using their strengths, right, which is all those pawns on the queen side. Now look at this gorgeous line, f4. Now, do you move your knight just because it's under attack? Nope. Keep going with your pawns. Queen stays there. Now, do you move your knight? Well, you can, but you're going to lose that pawn. So where do you move it? To d3. I got to say, guys, it's a very beautiful line. Um, you know, black is really using those queen side pawns to their maximal effect. 
And obviously, you know, you can't take that pawn anymore. E2 is hanging, queen E3 is hanging. And so basically the key line goes like this. Check here and C3, so beautiful. Look at those pawns just bearing down. I mean, you know, you can't, you can't take, I mean, because ultimately the pawn is gonna promote, right? Like it doesn't really matter what you do, but the king, the white king is so bad that the pawn is gonna promote. Pretty funny how black can turn the tables on white. Well, you know, that is the power of the initiative. That's the difference between, you know, C4 is a move that really gives black new ideas, new threats, and queen E6 doesn't, right? So black made the final mistake and they lost, right? Well, the way I interpret it, though, is that I'm not looking at this game just from this move, like, oh, black blundered with queen e6, but in fact, they could have won with c4, so therefore there was no problem for black. No, I, there, there was a problem, and the problem was that after the move c5, right here, the game became so unbalanced, so sharp, um, that it was hard for black to, you know, feel like they have control over what's going on, right? And that kind of comes back to our theme of the initiative, right? That I definitely feel that you cannot talk about like black having the initiative in this position. It was white, right? Black had the extra pawn, white had the initiative, black was feeling the pressure against their king later on. And, you know, both sides, yes, they could have played this part better. But um, it's hard to, to, you know, to look at this game and not think that, hey, like maybe this was a really big point. You know, maybe knight b8 was just a little bit too passive. And it just became a little too hard for black to play this position. So the main um, question was, well, maybe knight a5 was a better move. And so I, I did a little bit of exploring on this position, guys. Definitely, um, you know, not exhaustive. But the point is, okay, we want to go knight b3. And already your opponent has a choice. And the nice thing in chess, guys, is giving your opponent something to think about. Because when you go knight b8, like I said, White has only one move. Like it's it's very obvious that like next move black goes there. So there's no point in doing anything different than c5. But when they go knight a5, you actually do have choices. You have to figure out how you're stopping knight b3. So do you go queen a4? Do you go knight d2? Already two moves that white has to choose from. You know, you're giving your opponents more to, to uh, ponder over. All right, so now I'm going to give you a couple of lines, guys, that I looked at. In this position so let's say queen a4 well you want to take I go queen b6 right very natural move improving the uh, the queen and one thing I was looking at in this position was actually um, the move c5 it's like well, well why doesn't white just try something similar now I mean they can do that move and then take an e5 right but the point is that in these positions, um, the knight is actually better placed than it is on b8. It's actually more able to help um, the pawns advance. Sorry, guys, I'm just getting my lines here on my other computer. There we go. Uh, yes, and there was a cool line here with queen f6. Yeah, this was, I mean, okay, this is a little bit product of the computer analysis, but here you go, just to illustrate. So like, for example, here, you lose the pawn, but black's B pawn is actually really good. And yeah, black is on top. So that's one sample line um, of, you know, why C5 is not working quite so well here as it was against knight B8. Okay, so what else can white do? Let's take a look at the move knight to d2. Knight d2, okay, we're still going to go queen b6, right? And queen a4, I mean, you pretty much got to do that move. It's an active square for the queen, although, although we can look at um, c5 again. We can look at it in this case. c5, pawn takes, and queen takes e5. Yes, and again, you know, the difference is that this knight is just way better on a5 than it is on b8. So, like, similar structure, but the position of the knight makes a big difference. I was looking at this, and now take a look, guys, 
black is the one who is just advancing these pawns. You know, he even like gives up the bishop, queen d7, c3. And like, for example, in this line, black wins like that. And, you know, c2 is coming or if rook c2, then knight d4 is going to win. So, yeah, that's a pretty cool line. Of course, it's easier um, to find this when you're analyzing with the computer. But the point is that it does seem that in the, with a knight on a5, it's a lot harder for white to, to fight for the initiative. All right, so let's go back one last line just to show um, the whole point of knight a5. So let's say knight d2, queen b6, and I was looking at queen a4 here. And this was pretty, uh, pretty deep stuff, guys, this one moment. Um, so what is white's idea, right? That's always the question we want to understand. White's idea is to go pawn e4, rook b1, and win that pawn back. And that's why Black's move is so genius here. Bishop g6. I mean, pro, you know, master class on prophylactic moves, right? Um, I mean, you're anticipating e4. Now you might think, well, why can't white just do it? I mean, here you go. Let's put the pawn there and then let's just go rook b1. Uh, yes, but then black goes f5. And that tempo they saved, you know, now they're using it to open up an attack on your f2 pawn. Yeah, really quite beautiful. Like you just don't have time for rook b1 because of the attack on f2. Yep, well, you can feel it, guys. Yeah, who has the initiative here? So let's go back, a couple of moves. And on bishop g6, I was looking at rook a1, rook a8. Now. Luckily for black, white can't go knight b3 because of bishop c2 pin. Yeah, that's a really important detail. Um, normally, guys, you know, I don't like putting myself in a pin like that for black, but there's really no other way to hold that knight. Like if you don't play rook a8, you just lose the knight. By the way, there's always, and there's always these ideas of like b3 in the position. In fact, I really should try to figure out why this move can't just be played. I did not look at that and I actually have, no, do I have any ideas? Well, there's queen a5, right? And then there's b2. And, mm, well, you can't take my queen because then I'm just gonna be up material after I promote. You gotta go something like, I don't know, rook a3. Yeah, I guess the point is that maybe white just kind of survives for the moment. I mean, because they can give up their knight for the pawn, right? So like if let's say promotion, I take, uh, you take, yeah, white kind of survives three, uh, six, three, six, yeah, six pawns for each side. White's queen and rook are pretty active. They're not um, harmed too much by that pin. They can try to get rid of the queen quickly and I guess white is okay. So, I mean, black can probably go for a move like that. And But the point is that they have these ideas in the position constantly, right? But for now, they don't have to hurry. They can just go rook a8. But this move is, this kind of idea of pushing the extra pawn is definitely there. So basically, guys, I feel like white, you know, white is in kind of in survival mode in this position. This is, I mean, white is down a pawn. They have not won this pawn back. The pawn is dangerous. And they really have a lot of decisions to make. You know, should they have like a pawn there? Well, then there's queen d4 ideas. You know, should they, you know, try to go bishop e4, or pawn e3, right? Like lots of decisions to make, but I feel like black is not in any danger. And by the way, black can always go rook a6 to put the rook on a protected square to get out of the pin, right? So you see how, for me, watching this game, it feels like a lot um, was decided on this move, right? This decision of where to put the knight had a huge impact on the game. And I feel like knowing what we, you know, know what happened, um, knight a5 would have been 
um, a move that wouldn't have made it so easy for a white to seize the initiative and the result could have been perhaps quite different in this game. All right, guys. So um, your chess is not mathematics, you know, and it doesn't matter really if both of these moves are viable. You have to see, you have to see the dynamics of the game. How are they changing depending on this decision? You know, which side is it going to be easier to play for? Is it going to be, you know, um, how hard is it for your opponent to, let's say, find this move? Well, for an experienced player, not hard, you know, and they, they will play it and then they'll just like get into that very unbalanced situation. But over here, it is going to be a lot harder for White to seize the initiative when, first of all, he's got to deal with your fork. All right, guys, I'll probably have more games for you from the women's candidates uh, later on.